last week on Leisure and Lace. I have watched in these past seven years being here in Africa, interviewed hundreds of people, talked to thousands of people, and I'm finding out they're cursing their own life. I have watched people die in Africa who I personally knew. I have watched people get divorced in their marriage, marriages who I personally knew. And I'm telling you all, for those who have an ear, let them hear. This video is a further analysis of Go Black's claim that we are cursing our own lives. And in the case of Blacksit and K&K &K Squad, their marriages. Now, here's my disclaimer. I don't know either of these ladies personally and am not doing a hit piece or attempting to expose them in any way. So what do we know? K&K &K Squad and Blacksit both relocated with their husband and children from the USA and the UK respectively. K and K Squad relocated to Ghana and Blacksit and her family relocated to the Gambia. Unfortunately, both marriages ended in divorce. So the question is, would the divorces have happened had they not move to Africa. Let's look at the facts. In my own journey to find my roots in Africa, I watched many videos, including Black Sit, Bag, and many others. I enjoyed watching Juliet and her husband work as a team to build their home and settle down in the Gambia. However, it was plain to see that Juliet was the more extroverted and aggressive of the two, as she often did the most talking and seemed to take on the leadership role in the family. Now, this can sometimes be an issue for men, even if they are ill-equipped to lead. And I am not saying this was the case with Juliet's husband. I am speaking in general terms only. I surmise that this has always been the relationship dynamic between the two, well before they ever stepped foot in the Gambia, and that may have attributed to the demise of their marriage, along with the trials and tribulations of living in Africa, of which Blacksit speaks little about because it is disadvantageous of her to do so because she makes a living selling real estate in the Gambia. So her speaking out, you know, and saying, you know, Gambia sucks. It's not a good idea. Now, there have been rumors spread by quite a few troublemakers that Juliet was cheating on her husband with local Gambian men. I can't confirm those allegations, but in that case, she would have cursed her own life and ruined her own marriage. But you can't blame Africa for that. It was also alleged that Juliet was doing some kind of shady business with the real estate. You know, like she was scamming the diaspora and that sort of thing, which I don't really believe. You know, a lot of people say that, but I think it's really just a misunderstanding and that she didn't really understand all of the red tape that was involved and how convoluted it can be purchasing land in Africa. I, I don't really believe those those rumors or accusations about her. Uh, she just doesn't seem like the type. I don't think she I don't think she was doing that. Proper expectations weren't set for the diasporans that were buying the property. And so they just went crazy, you know, and, and then, of course, the troublemakers out there, you know, saying she's a scammer and causing all kinds of problems. Don't believe everything you hear, guys. And maybe, just maybe, Adrian was the problem. Maybe he was incompetent, weak, or not carrying his weight. Everybody loves to blame the woman, but we know in many marriages, especially in the community, that the woman does the majority of the work to keep the family together. 
mentally, emotionally, and financially. So, the so-called curse, the divorce, is actually a blessing. Or, maybe Adrian just moved to the Gambia at Julia's insistence instead of standing on business. Was Julia and Adrian carrying around evil spirits? And once moving to Africa, they acquired more spirits leading to the breakup of their marriage? Let me know in the comments. Is Go Black right that we're cursing our own lives? And is that the case with this divorce? Is Go Black right? K&K Squad shook up things when they relocated their family from the U.S. to Ghana. They were highly criticized when they criticized Ghana and told the truth about their unique experiences. I really love this couple. They seem like such a good match for each other. But sadly, they also divorced after moving to Africa. Now, K&K Squad was very open about their issues which again were present before moving to Ghana. They just couldn't make it work. And I was really sad to hear that they split up. Both pointed fingers at the other, so I would say there was partial blame on both sides. Now, shortly after the split though, Mrs. KNK married a Ghanaian man who clearly told her his goal was to get to the USA. According to her, there were many red flags, but she went ahead with the marriage anyway. And apparently the Ghanaian was cheating while she worked tirelessly to get him visas and pay for his room and board, clothes, cell phone, everything. Because she was trying to get him to Mexico where she was. And, you know, she ended up, you know, he was in Dubai for a while and she was paying for everything and, you know, at some point in Ghana. So it was a lot. K&K has a video detailing the fact that he only wanted a green card, which if any African wants to marry you within meeting you, you know, within like a, a week or two and or even a month and, you know, he doesn't have a pot to piss in, just assume he's in it for money and or a green card and that's it. You know, it's, it just, it's just what it is, all right? She said she spent over $100,000 on that ninja before he decided he had enough of pretending. Now, I can agree with Go Black in this case of this second divorce that K&K &K cursed her own life. However, wanting love is not evil nor crime, and she was just looking for it in all the wrong places. I'm sure we can agree that she's better off without that guy. So, another blessing perhaps? But at the end of the day, is Go Black to Africa right? Are we cursing our own lives? And is Africa really the death sentence that he says it is? Should we not move to the continent unless our marriages and relationships are perfect? Let me know in the comments. And just briefly, I really wanted to talk about the Bag family. Black Acres of the Gambia, Rick and Cynthia. They're also one of my favorite, favorite families over there in Africa. So they are in the Gambia, and they've been there going on about eight years now. So that's a very long time, and still together. Now, do I think that their marriage is perfect? Absolutely not. I'm sure it's not. But there is apparently a very strong foundation there. So between them and the children, because remember, if you remember those old videos, they said like initially when they first got there, Rick said that they were beating him up. Cynthia was letting them have it. The kids was letting them have it. It was just awful because of all the, the uh, you know, everything, all the bad stuff that they were experiencing there with the Gambia, just you know, with housing and things like that. It's very hard to get settled there. But once you get settled there and you get in a routine and you get all your, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, things the way, you know, your, your, your living situation the way you want it, uh, it's not too bad if you have that strong foundation 
in your marriage. So, I mean, kudos to them. And, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, they'll continue thriving and all that good stuff. But, um, but you definitely need a really, really good, strong foundation uh, when you move to Africa because there are just so many things that you're going to encounter. Rainy season, you know, roofs collapsing and sidewalks and it's a lot. And uh, if you guys aren't getting along or you don't know how to, um, to communicate with each other, uh, where, you know, you listen, he listens and that type of thing, and you come to a compromise, uh, you're not going to make it. So, uh, so 100%, you know, I am, um, you know, like I said, I love this couple and, uh, I'm so glad that, uh, they've been able to make it. So, uh, so no curses for them. Yeah. So let's, let's all just, uh, wish good things for them and keep rooting for them. I also want to thank you guys for being here and supporting this channel and taking the time to watch this video. I'm Lexi and I'd like to just welcome all of you. Please subscribe for more African-centered news, stories, and commentary. And most of all, don't forget to leave your comments. I would love to hear your opinion. See you in the next one.